Hi everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about the reading Architectonics of State Power, Complicity and Resistance. The reading is an excerpt from the book The State and the Arts, Articulating Power and Subversion by Judith Kapferer. I would like to start off by giving you a brief introduction to the article, um, followed by my analysis of the reading and how it pertains to the statement that I've chosen to evaluate. The statement I have chosen to analyze is the relation between the state and the arts shapes our understanding of aesthetics as the central component of the politics of space. What that means is the relationship between the government and the arts influences the way we as a society create public space and the overall cultural identity of society. So for my article intro, um, let's just jump right in here. This article explains the relationship between the state and the arts and how the two have constantly influenced society. On page four, Kapferer points out that during the Enlightenment period of the 18th century, the public was encouraged to explore philosophy, science, political debates, and the arts, which gave birth to the public sphere. When the Enlightenment period ended, the rights and existence of the public sphere has been threatened ever since. The reading then goes on to explain how society began treating cultural activities as commodities, often measured by cash value rather than its effect on quality of life of society as a whole. Now, going back to my chosen statement, the relationship between the state and the arts shapes our understanding of aesthetics as the central component of the politics of space, I would like to take compare the statement to this example I was thinking about throughout this reading. Um, I want to compare it to teenagers who want to express themselves and decorate their bedrooms. They're influenced by what they see in the media, the social status of themselves or others, the interests of their friends, etc. They may choose to decorate their bedrooms based on these influential factors, but ultimately it's up to their parents to approve and allow them to decorate their bedrooms in that manner. They may have to convince their parents of who, what, when, where, and why they should be able to decorate their bedrooms in that way, and eventually an agreement is met and the space is used as an area of creative expression. Um, I think it's also important to know what decor may already exist in the entire home that was originally selected by the parents, the governing body, and how the bedroom decor will eventually become a part of the family's daily life and define the identity of the household as well. I believe this example simply illustrates the public policy procedure. This example shows a proposal by the teenager to the governing body, the parents. The teenager, teenager may then advocate and negotiate the reasons for the bedroom decor, and then the two parents discuss the implications and ramifications of the proposal, and the two parties will eventually reach a conclusion. So um, that kind of sums up my thoughts on this article of a public identity and public space and how the state and society work together to achieve that goal and achieve their identity. So uh, the, I believe that the author wrote this article to exemplify just how much arts and culture influence all facets of society. Economics, politics, social status, education are all affected by the arts, which in turn influences the rules and policies created by the governing bodies of society. Throughout history, cultural practices have influenced political climates, as noted in the article. Because the arts are often viewed as controversial or unimportant in today's society, I think that it's significant to recognize how impactful the arts have defined society for centuries. So I'm going to talk a little bit now about this article that I found in the New York Times entitled, How Public Art Turns Political, by Michael Kimmelman. The article describes the debate over the Holocaust Memorial in Vienna, Austria. And I want to share this quote with you from that article. So, quote, The trouble has partly to do with whom the memorial is to serve, whether it is for Jews as a site of mourning or for non-Jewish Austrians as an expression of shame or both. 
This has led to the question of who is to decide what form it should take, end quote. I chose this extreme example because it brings to light what happens when the political history of a society heavily influence the overall identity of that society. In this instance, the artwork brings on public debate of which members of society the artwork is really meant to serve and for what reasons. Their identity as a society is going to be defined in some ways by this installation, and it's difficult for the people to decide how they would like that message to be conveyed in the aesthetic of their space. On page 5 of Kafner's reading, um, she explains, quote, the city as... The city as metonym can also be judged a civilization by its arts and sciences, crafts and philosophies, politics and economics, by all of its cultural and societal productions and their articulations and interconnections, by its whole way of life." End quote. Monuments like the Holocaust Memorial in Austria have previously been removed from similar public sites in Europe for reasons such as obstruction to pedestrian traffic or simply because the art installation was an eyesore. Is this a question of the public evolving and not identifying with the artwork anymore in the current place and time? Or does it state that society truly has lost the ability to appreciate the arts and the message that the artwork is trying to convey and to society and their identity. The author conveyed that the arts can also serve as a checks and balance system and serve as an evaluation system to determine the value of the services of the state. Cultural practices and creative advancements set to the monetary values in regards to the market in which consumers then act upon often set the tone of the bourgeoisie. On page 8, Kafferun also mentions that, quote, the autonomy of the arts is constantly threatened by the cultures of affluent consumers and investors, end quote. As a society, we so badly want to reap the benefits of the arts, but do not always encourage the creative freedom to, that it takes to cultivate and express quality art. Art itself has become a commodity that is capitalized on by society and the state. Okay, so the statement, the relation between the state and the arts shapes our understanding of aesthetics as the central component of the politics of space is important for arts leaders to realize that there are two sides of the state and the arts coin. On one side, the arts are used for enriching cultural experiences, education, and expression. On the other side, the arts are a commodity that must be consumed, which is brought on by our capitalistic society and the standards of consumerism. I think it is important for leaders in the arts to recognize these two key components in order to better serve as an advocate and a leader in the arts, and to communicate those needs of the arts to society and make sure that society can communicate their needs of arts and culture back to the state. One of the key details in the article that helps define the statement above is the relationship that Charles Saatchi, co-founder of MNC Saatchi and owner of the Saatchi Gallery. As a marketing professional and arts enthusiast, Saatchi understands how to sell a product, the true value of a product, and what the public perceives as the true value of a product. On page 4, Kapfer states that, quote, the art market is the art market, its popularization and the sanctification of arts and their works, along with the competitive emulation of traders, brokers, buyers, and sellers of such works, compose the foundation of the commodity fetishism that ineluctably colors the contemporary aesthetics of capital. End quote. Kapfer points out that it is due to the business people, like Saatchi, that the arts were so easily objectified as a product and not as an experience that could then be promoted for capital. So, in conclusion, the state and the arts define the identity of a society by creating cultural and monetary value systems in society. These systems shape our understanding of aesthetics that influence the space and cultural interaction of our daily lives. 
Thanks for watching my presentation. I look forward to talking with you all soon. Have a good night. Bye.